So he jumps so. out of the way and fires like this. Stop the car! Like that angle. Stop the car! Stop the car! He said it was about 20 feet away from him. Welcome to Corrupt Cops, where we expose police misconduct in the U.S. Today we're discussing two cases where corrupt officers used guns and pepper spray to assault innocent men. It's time to demand accountability and justice. Like, share, and comment to join the fight against corruption. If you like this video, press 1. On January 10th, 2019, the Memphis Police Department received a 911 call from a gas station clerk reporting a man vandalizing the store, breaking shelves, and throwing items around. Upon receiving this complaint, dispatchers informed officers in the area to respond, and soon enough, Officer William Skelton arrived at the Shell gas station on Airways Boulevard, where he made contact with the accused 30-year-old Drew Thomas. Come on! Not now! Come on! You're under arrest! I said you're under arrest, mother Get the f over here! Get your mother over here! Hands on the car. Hands on the car, kid. Oh, I ain't doing that. You just dealt with me, man. I ain't doing that. I got bound over. Officer Skeleton rushed to a gas station and arrested Mr. Thomas without checking if he actually committed vandalism. This raises concerns about the professionalism of Officer Skeleton's actions because arrests should only happen with probable cause which requires more than just suspicion. The arrest was solely based on a 911 call without verifying the facts, which could lead to wrongful arrest based on false accusations. Officer Skeleton's disrespectful behavior towards Mr. Thomas, who cooperated without resistance, adds to the unprofessionalism of the situation. I got a lot of really Walk away. Look at my book. I didn't do nothing, man. I was trying to go to work. Have you ever even had a real job? Downtown. Okay. Yeah, you're about to have some work downtown. Hands behind your back, you're under arrest. Hang on to those for me, please. This way. Where are we going? Jail. For what? F uh, vandalism. What I vandalize? The inside of the store. What I do? You vandalize the inside of the store. Sit. No idea. I bought some coffee. Good. Sit. Am I heavy? No. Sit. Why not? Because I said so. Put your feet in. Pizza. Eat a dick, mother. Officer Skeleton was way out of line when he cursed and used offensive language towards Mr. Thomas for no reason. It seemed like Officer Skeleton already thought Mr. Thomas was a criminal, which goes against what the Memphis Police Department stands for. They're supposed to work with the community to make things safer, not treat people disrespectfully. Even though Mr. Thomas caused a problem at the gas station, he still deserved to be treated with decency. Officer Skeleton's behavior was totally against what the police department aims to do. The bottom is sounding nicer, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Sure is. You need the rip hop to rip off. No, no. Are you sure? Seven seven four. One male black in custody. Kick my car again. I'm gonna foam you. You understand me, kid? I will spray the f out of you. You worthless piece of incestuous. Shit. I'm gonna stay out here and keep an eye on him. Suck 
my balls, kid. Come again? I'll do this match. A problematic situation involving unprofessional behavior by police officers. They neglected to properly investigate before arresting Mr. Thomas, even though key witnesses were available. Additionally, Officer Skeleton's threat to use pepper spray on Mr. Thomas, who was already handcuffed in a patrol car, raises questions about the proper use of force. Legal precedent like the Vineyard v. Wilson case suggests that such actions could be considered excessive force and a violation of constitutional rights. I'm, I told him I was going to spray him. Seven seven four. Suspects kicking my car door. I am deploying my pepper foam. I'm trying. Anybody got a rip, Pablo? Mine seems to be missing. I got a rip, Pablo. Yay! Yeah. Seven seven four. Suspect appears to have calmed down. We're securing the rip, Pablo now. I know you, I know you just, this hang got the door. Yeah. I'll hold him on the other side. Good luck. I've used the phone. I bet that's still not a mother. I hope so. Officer Skeleton went way overboard by repeatedly spraying Mr. Thomas with pepper foam while he was already cuffed and stuck in the back of a patrol car. Even though Mr. Thomas wasn't a threat, Officer Skeleton decided to punish him further by denying him fresh air, essentially trapping him in a suffocating environment. It was unjustified and downright cruel. You got enough for a felony? Yes. Good. Did you uh, hear all that on the radio? Thank you. I've never been more fast. Oh, well, thank you. Never? <laughs> I phoned him. I phone, I phone, I phone the f out of him. I'm gonna have my day on that. That's fine. I phone the f out of him. I'll tell the camera 
I foamed the f*** out of him. I told him I was going to foam the f*** out then, of him. And then, and then he started kicking again. I'm like, you going to do it? He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm like, oh, here we go. I, he kicked the door. I said, you do it again. I'm going to foam you. He did it again. So I foamed him. Okay. Fine with me. We got top of his ass. Yeah, and he's a Republic now. Oh, you got his name and stuff. Oh, yeah. Biddick's working on the ticket right now. I told him. You did give him a fair warning. Yeah, when, when he started kicking, I turned my, my oh, body cam Sorry. on. Right then, I was like, oh. <sighs> oh, is it on unlock? It's unlock. It's unlock. Yeah. Ambulance coming. yeah. yeah. Oh, no. 774. Do have ambulance and route check. I wasn't officially on scene. What happened? <laughs> it's rough back there. Just, just be holding. I told him. You didn't get any licks on you, did you? I don't think so. I started. I would have held on, but I would have got devastated. I started to. I started to smell it there for a second. Yeah, I would have got devastated. If I held on. All right, down. Why you get spread? Huh? Were you were you kicking? Did you tell me you stop kicking? Was it at the end? Were you kicking? Were you kicking? So do you need my? Explanation for the arrest ticket? No. Okay. What are you charging him with? Okay. He he says he's got enough for felony vandalism. Really? Yeah. Nice. Oh, thank you. That sounds good. He's actually barred from here. He's on the. Do ag do ag trespass. Yeah. Do ag trespass. So we we are for sure gonna have a felony on this. He's not still kicking it. No, he's just wiggling. The phone's doing its work. I mean, I have a... We got, we got more pepper spray. I know, I know. We can always pepper spray again if we need to. You gonna make me spray you again? We've just witnessed a group of officers laughing about the incident, making jokes, and even discussing what charges to bring against Mr. Thomas. At one point, the tyranny becomes crystal clear because we can hear a couple of officers getting audibly happy about the possibility of charging Mr. Thomas with a felony. Paramedics finally arrive at the scene and realize how dire the situation is for Mr. Thomas. He can be heard begging for help after essentially being trapped in a metal pepper-filled box. Are you going to let the paramedics take a look at you or no? You are? Yeah. Okay. If I, I mean, it's going to hurt when I wash them out, but it's going to sting worse. All right, come on. Ultimately, an investigation into this incident was launched by the Memphis Police Inspectional Services Bureau. Officer Skeleton was later charged with violating the department's excessive force policy because while Thomas was handcuffed and seated in the back of a car posing no threat, Skeleton sprayed him. Skeleton was also charged with violating MPD's pepper spray policy as the spray cannot be used to prevent the destruction of property and because he did not help Thomas. Finally, Skeleton was charged with violating the department's personal conduct policy but the eight-year veteran resigned before his formal hearing. Two other officers, Jonathan Sharman and Jonathan Haltman, were also charged with violating MPD policy, but the charges were later dismissed. Both men remain on the force today. Next video on the 20th of August, 2022. A woman and her boyfriend, Anthony Thompson, were engaged in a verbal dispute as they had recently separated. At some point, the argument got out of hand and Anthony allegedly discharged a firearm into the air and fled the scene. Officer Robert Nance of the Sherwood Police Department was the first to arrive. After talking to the 911 caller, Nance began walking to the rear of the apartment complex. As he approached a vehicle that was pulling out to leave, a woman yelled out to him. Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop the car! Oh, 58, he's fleeing in a red GMC, GMC. SUV heading towards, towards cutoff. Cut cut 
Shots fired. Shots fired. Officer Nance attempted to follow the suspect, but lost him and returned to the scene a minute later. Apartment. Are you the one he shot at? He, is, he shot up in the air, but he, please don't shoot him. Please okay. do not. Get in the car. Okay. Where is he going? Get in the car. I don't know. Okay. Is, 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 it, okay. is anyone hurt? No. We, no. We are trying to make okay. sure he's going. No, no one is hurt. hurt. No right? one's hurt. Okay. Where is he going? I don't know. We don't, we, we, she was on the phone with him. We told him to pull over and put your hands up and cooperate. Where does he live? He lives here? Yes. Okay. Are you on the phone with him? No, just pull over and put your gun out the car, Anthony. It could be simple. You don't have to do this. He, where is he at? And I don't want y'all to hurt him, but really don't. It's just not in his right mind, bro. Okay, okay. Take a deep breath, okay? Can you please just stop, Anthony? Let me talk to him. Anthony, can you hear me? What's his Anthony? What? What's his name? Do y'all have people after his car? And Do what? Do y'all have people chasing him currently? We're, we're trying to find him right now, okay? He just don't hurt him. Do you know where he might go? I don't, I don't. What was going on today? What what led up to this? Me coming to get his stuff, he, for him to come get his stuff. He had been out smoking and, well, I guess drinking and smoking to do whatever he was doing all night. And he came in at like three something. And his stuff was already packed. And I'm like, you know, your stuff is at the door. Just get your stuff with you and, you know, go. Instead, he wants to argue and all this stuff. And I'm like, Anthony, you got that gun. I feel a little intimidated. Can you just get your stuff with go? Mm -hmm. I know you drunk. You're not in your right mind, so I call my sister. Because, for one, I didn't think you would get this far. I thought it was just a simple, petty-ass argument. Mm -hmm. Arguing, he could hit shit and go. And, but he didn't. He shot a man off in the house. And all I heard was gunshots back then. I don't know. Eventually, a supervisor arrives on scene. Where did he shoot from? Um, it's inside the apartment. I, inside the apartment. I shot. No, I shot at his feet. Yeah. So I pulled in. Mm -hmm. You were you were in the car. Mm -hmm. You were the one I pulled up behind, mm -hmm. right? That was right over here, like around, the, basically as soon as I pulled into the complex. And then dispatch said she was showing me to the apartment. Mm -hmm. We kind of made the S curve. Once we got around there, she stopped. I got out and started talking to her, and she said, "That's him right and there, leaving in that SUV." Mm -hmm. There was a lady standing outside around maybe apartment 20. Mm -hmm. Said she heard shots from that direction. So I got out of my vehicle, started walking down. This SUV comes barreling towards me, no. and that's when I took a couple shots. Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop the girl! Stay here and cut for just okay. calm yep. down. Yep. You're, 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 you good? Just, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Take, get your deep breath. I yep. Relax for a second. I don't have and, uh, just chat with him. And you got it. I'll, I'll get there. Nance then provides his official statement. Do I need Garrity or anything? This is the initial okay. that you got to give me. Okay. But, um, so you, the way it'll work, mm -hmm. you won't have to give a formal statement for a couple of six hours. Okay. okay well, go ahead. Um, or, originally, I thought they said the suspect vehicle was was, was a Cadillac. Cadillac. I pulled in, and it was right there by that office sign. Okay. Um, then dispatch said, you know, when I said, hey, they're pulling around further in, they said, well, that's, they're trying to show you where the apartment is. So we took the S-curve to the second half of the complex. She stops. 
gets out and tells me that's him right there. He just fired a shot. Um, there was also someone else standing maybe around apartment 20 or so, standing outside. I asked her, did you hear a gunshot? And she said yes from back there. Um, so when she told me that's him, that's him right there in that car, uh, I got out of my car, started walking towards him. Car comes towards me, high rate of speed. Um, I already had my weapon out as he was coming towards me. Uh, all right. I think it was af after he passed me, I fired two shots and then got in my car. And by the time I was able to get turned around and back out, I, I lost him. Okay. So. The officer is clearly embellishing the suspect's actions to cover his own. The footage reveals the SUV mentioned by the caller slowing down as it passes through the apartment complex, staying within its lanes and not posing any danger. Notably, Officer Nance, in fact, endangered more people by not knowing who else might have been in the vehicle. Moreover, he fired with occupied apartments as his backdrop. It wasn't until half an hour later that a lieutenant showed up to investigate. The apartments down at the end there, they found on the left there, work truck, white work truck and a white car is where Nance was. They found his brass in there, so. Where did, where did that guy shoot at? I guess, it, I don't know. I was trying to talk to Peter. He was trying to explain to me, but he wasn't making much sense. Apparently, he shot inside the apartment as Nance was walking up there. Rear end of the, the Chrysler was going to have and property I guess damage on it. The guy came out, and somebody pointed to him and said, that's him or whatever. And I guess, I don't know yeah, if the guy engaged he can't or, Do we know what kind of gun he's got? They believe so. I think an AR. I'm not 100% sure. I decided... Dale made it we, sound like we don't possibly don't know what kind of model, don't know what kind of gun he's got. He said it may be an AR, but other family members. Really I don't know why we. I don't know what kind of gun he's got. Just I think it's an AR because Dale said AR, but he made it sound like Nance was the one shooting with his AR, but Nance okay. shot with his 45. So I, okay. guess hey, Chris, he's 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 I ain't got no good info right now. Just if y'all find that dude, just. You know he's got a gun, and he's already been shot at, okay? I'm going to keep my AR with I'm going to go ahead down that way, too. Well, he, Nance shot at him. No one fired at N or endangered his life. In fact, the officers couldn't locate any casings or bullet holes from the alleged shots fired by Anthony. Moreover, the officers were noticeably surprised by the scarcity of 911 calls. So this is this is uh, uh, Nance's casings. Okay. I see one. There's one, and there's one back there. So is, that, is that all he got shot with fly? There, and you got the one right there. He said he shot a couple of times. Is there a third one right there? I think so. Oh. Nope. I think there's just them two. Just this two? Yeah. Okay, we can't. It's going to be hard to make the scene any bigger, but. Oh. He said the guy was driving past him. Oh, he was in the vehicle whenever yeah. he shot at him? Was he shooting at Nance? You don't know? So he supposedly shot inside here, right? I have no idea. I hadn't. That's what they said. He was shooting from out from the apartment. Inside the apartment. Okay. You want me to start talking to the neighbors or you want to wait? Well, just, to, uh, just make a note that the three of us cleared the apartment. Yeah, I guess. You didn't saw any shell casings? Not any shell here. casings here. And like I was telling him, I took my time getting up here trying to canvas a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I parked on any. I, I looked before I parked, but there's always a chance. Yeah. Um, and I didn't notice any on the floor. In the I didn't either. But that's what the, uh, uh, the victim said was he was, that's where he was firing from. You'd have thought we'd have got more calls. Like an yeah, you think. Here at 6 o'clock in the morning in the wild. Yeah, no doubt. There was, since I've been up here, one lady came out from like this apartment, and she's rubbing her eyes, and she looked up, and seen the car and the tape. She's like, "What in the world's going on?" So she didn't hear them. Huh. You think if you're shooting an AR from right here, well, you're gonna have casings? Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> You think everybody in here would be outside? You know how loud that had to be? 
<laughs> yeah. And we didn't get, you'd have thought we'd have got 15 9 one calls on that. Yeah. Was the man coming this way? Correct. Okay, and oh. Nance fires... As he first. went past him. So Nance fires this way. Correct. So where did our bullets go? Oh, that's what we were just... That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't know where Nance was at. I don't know where he was parked, and I don't know how he got to where he was. But anyway, he fired at the truck as it come by, as it, as it come out. We don't know. He said he said it was about 15 to 20 feet away, so it must have been right there as he come by. He must have been, like, right there. We had, we found his casings. We hadn't found any bullet holes and nothing else over here because he was shooting this direction. We got crime scene tape set up over here around the t two shell casings. We hadn't found any other shell casings. Okay. So that's so, what I know now. Um, Ferris says the gentleman in the apartment on the ground floor, right behind these stairs here, came out and made the comment that you know he heard gunshots, cracked open the door, and he saw the officer. He saw an ant shoot. Yeah, or her, her, and you know, shut the door. But it was. Okay. And he only fired twice. Dude had come out of the apartment, gets in his vehicle, starts speeding up, coming at him. He pulls out it. You know, he already had his pistol out. Uh, the guy drives by him, and you know, somebody else had made mention something about uh, that's him. That's him. Uh, he just shot. The Nance fired this direction uh, as best we can determine because he said the vehicle went by him heading out. So he jumps so, out of the way and fires like this, this correct. like that angle. Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop the car! He said it was about 20 feet away from him. So the shell casings are right by that pole. Okay. So if he was 20 feet away from him, I don't know if he was here. I mean. You could be 20 feet away at about anywhere in this given area. So I don't know exactly where he was. Did he hit I, anything? He don't know. Okay. I hadn't, I hadn't found any bullet holes in no cars, or I can't see any evidence in the wall or anything over here that I found yet to where his bullets. But at 20 feet away, it's going to be hard to miss a Tahoe. From what I'm understanding, your brother's involved in a crime. What crime? Because I just got a call saying police shooting at my baby brother. That ain't no good call. I understand. You know, we, I asked him to come get his shit. He came here at 3 o'clock in the morning, arguing, toting a gun, pointed at me. You pointed at me in my house, and I don't got no motherfucking weapon to uh, defend myself. You know how your brother is. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, Anthony, get your and go. Because it's not that serious to do all this. So he on the phone with my daddy, they get to arguing. So he let he shoot, legit shooting the house at me. I'm le I legit had to run down the motherfucking stairs and run behind my building. So do you know if I also shot at my little brother? That's correct. What was the point of shooting them? Was he still pointing the weapon at them? So, I mean, that's all, all I can tell you right now. And, um, like I said, this is a crime scene here. All this is, but we, we can, we're not blocking off the entire area because people are residents here. So we got to figure out where the second or third possible crime scene is. So. Where was he at when y'all shot at him? I don't know. I wasn't here. Do you know where was he? Can you find out where was he at when I was shot at him so I can know if his blood, if I know if my no, little no, brother hurt right him? He's not. Here. You want to talk to him or what? Let me tell you that. Even with numerous conflicting reports, investigators failed to uncover any bullet holes or spent cartridges apart from the two fired by Officer Nance. He did fire one shot inside there. Yeah. That's it. She's saying that she, he fired a shot with an AR like up in the ceiling. Yeah. So I'm, I'm expecting a Find a bolt hole up there. That's not here. Yeah, I don't. Well, she said she was in her hair. So this is more of an angle shot right here. That's yeah, it was at an angle. He just, like, they he it at an angle. <laughs> Anthony turned himself in after being accused of aggravated assault against a family member. The police said Anthony drove towards an officer, who then fired his weapon. This raised questions about whether the police misled the public or didn't investigate enough. The officer was given leave, 
but legal precedent says deadly force should only be used if there's a real threat. No evidence was found to support the allegation against Anthony, so it's unclear if the officer's actions were justified. The department hasn't corrected their statement, and it's unclear if the officer faced discipline. Go into bed at night when you're going in for the night at the end of the day. Make sure you bring all your toys inside so that those bad guys can't get them. But if you do forget and leave it outside, I'll make sure that they're safe. Stop the girl! Nance, you can be a real bitch. Woo ah, woo ah, woo ah. Police rush off to start their day. Who knows what jobs will come their way? Don't be a bitch, Nance. Make sure you tell our police chief that you love Officer Nance. Nance, you're being a bitch. Solving crimes both old and new, detectives look for every clue. She's saying that she, he fired a shot with an AR like up in the ceiling. Yeah. So I'm, I'm expecting a yeah. kind of bolt hole up there. Police tell cars to stop and go. Tell speeding drivers to go slow. Stop the car! Stop the car! A patrolman walking on his beat chases a burglar up the street. Stop the car! Sirens wail, woo ah woo! Bright lights flash, coming through. Police ride fast, broom broom broom. Oh, being a dumb bitch. Woo ah woo ah woo ah. Police work hard to make things right. Who knows what jobs they'll do tonight. Thank you, Nance, for dialing your bitch down. Instead of filing charges against him in July of 2023, less than a year after this clearly horrendous shooting, the department went ahead and promoted Robert Nance to sergeant just several months after the incident. It wasn't until charges of aggravated residential burglary and terroristic threatening in the first degree were piled onto Anthony's existing charges that his potential time behind bars skyrocketed to a range of 10 to 52 years. And only after these new charges were brought against him did Anthony decide to abandon his plea of not guilty and instead admitted guilt to the aggravated assault charge. Thanks for tuning in to Corrupt Cops, where we uncover the truth behind police misconduct. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this eye-opening content, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Together, let's demand accountability and justice for all.